Welcome to the channel everybody. Today we're going to be looking at a wonderful uh, a game, a really amazing game of chess between Gary Kasparov and Vishyanand from Linares in 1993, which was a really top tier tournament for many years. And uh, Kasparov, best player in the world, uh, taking on Vishyanand who was rated 27 tenet uh, in 1993. Kasparov was rated over 2800 so this is an attacking game between two of the heavyweights and we get a heavyweight class uh, in the game kasarov playing with white begins with d4 we get anand plays d5 we get c4 and then we get c6 slav defense by anand we get knight f3 followed by knight f6 knight c3 D takes uh, on uh, C4, then we get A4. Now, A4 is an interesting move. Uh, you've gambited a pawn, which you're going to look to get back later on. But of course, it allows black to pay uh, E6 and then get this bishop in here unchallenged uh, for the rest of the game. Um, so, uh, bishop to F5 by Anand, then we get E3. Then we get e6, we get uh, bishop taking back the pawn on c4, that did gambit it up, and then we get bishop to b4. After bishop to b4, we get castles by Kasparov, then knight to d7, h4. Is the knight on the rim dim? Well, we often hear that, don't we? But this is a good move uh, by Kasparov because it... Uh, if, for instance, um, after bishop to g6, um, you know, you don't want to take this straight away because in the game we get h3 by Kasparov. Because if you take, you could actually be opening yourself up to uh, a nasty, um, you know, attacking variation, such as if you played something like bishop to d2, you've got queen to c7, and already you've got an attack on this pawn. So in the game, uh, Kasparov plays h3, and we get castles by uh, Anand, and after castles, now we get uh, knight takes the bishop on g6, we get h takes g6, and this uh, leads for the opportunity maybe later in the game for uh, Kasparov to push this h-pawn up along uh, the file, but also we've got this nice bishop attacking uh, the king here. So we've got these two pawns to think about, and this uh, uh, this bishop becomes a major attacking piece in this game by Kasparov. So he's already setting a plan for the rest of the game uh, here, and after here we get uh, queen to c2, we get rook to c8, rook to d1, and then queen to b6, which is uh, chess.com says an inaccuracy, but the game is still finely balanced at this stage of the game. Uh, we get e4, c5, and then we get d5. So d5, we get knight e5 attacking the bishop. So we get bishop to e2. Then we get e takes d5, knight takes d5, knight takes the knight back in d5, and then we get rook to d5. So here we are, we're 18 moves in, game is finely balanced, uh, slight advantage to Kasparov you might see, uh, but we're going to begin to see um, Kasparov here just turning up the heat on Vishyanand here. So we get here we get knight to c6. Now knight to c6 seems like a pretty good move because you're thinking for an end this pawn is not really being challenged that means you can get your knight in here this is a juicy spot to get your knight uh, in here because of course you'll be attacking your knight you're attacking the bishop um, but also you're opening up an opportunity maybe later in the game to sacrifice here uh, with a check so lots of attacking possibilities for anand a really juicy square to get your knight in here on d4 so now we get uh, by kasparov bishop to c4. Now bishop to c4 of course is lining up on uh, the king, this attacking diagonal, and of course we know that this is now pinned, which means any piece that will lay on this square while the king stays on g8 will be free to take. Um, so that's just a good motive to keep in mind. Then we get knight to d4, and after queen to d3 and rook c to d8, 
we get bishop to e3. Now, bishop to e3, of course, is a good move because we get, first of all, rook takes d5, then we get bishop takes, then we get rook to d8, and then queen to c4. Now, queen to c4, again, it comes up as an inaccuracy, but you're attacking this pawn. You're forcing uh, a land to respond, and a land goes rook to d7. Then we get uh, rook to c1, and which is a nice move because if rook to c1, say for something you take just a simple move like a6, well that allows this nice little sequence where uh, after bishop takes knight, pawn takes, you get check. Then after d8, you get queen to c4, again tacking this pawn. Uh, king to h8, you take the pawn, then you go d3. E5. These are all top computer moves here, uh, but let's just follow the sequence to the end. You get bishop to e7, rook to d1, queen uh, to b2, and after uh, bishop takes on g6, queen to e2 now attacking the rook, and we get rook takes uh, after the check, and another check, pawn blocks, and we get rook takes rook, and then after the bishop takes back and queen to c2, we see that white is now up a clear pawn. So a bit of a long uh, variation there, but clearly this is something that would have been in the minds of Kasparov um, and Anand. So in the game, this is why uh, Anand moves over to uh, queen to f6, protecting this ID, because if you take now with the bishop, you can just take back with the uh, queens, which stops this whole sequence. So we get rook to d1 afterwards, attacking this. Um, then we get knight to uh, e6, queen to b3. We get a5 by Anand, who's just trying to basically block up here the queen side, any attacking motives up along this side. Then we get rook to d3, knight to f4. And here there's a truly brilliant, well, it's not a brilliant move according to chess.com, but it's a great move. It really is a great move. Uh, let's see if you can find it. I'll give you a few seconds. Can you find a move that Kasparov plays here? It's just fantastic. He plays pawn to e5, which is giving up the pawn, but why can't you take the pawn? In the game, Anand goes f5, but what happens if you took the pawn on e5? Well, if you take pawn e5, you get bishop takes f7 check. After the rook takes back, you play rook to d8, and your king has to move uh, to h7, and you take the rook for free. So nice little tactical uh, motive there. So Anand plays f5, then we get bishop to f4, Queen takes uh, f4, then we get e6. So e6 is a great move again. Um, we get rook to d8, and here Kasparov displays play e7. Uh, again, he could have played other moves, but e7 is a very good move. So we get rook to e8, we get uh, rook to f3, queen to c1 check, uh, Kasparov goes to h2, then we get uh, rook takes the pawn, and look at this for a lovely move. Uh, bishop takes f7, king has to go to h8, and here Kasparov plays a brilliant move. He plays the rather wonderful, and uh, not easy to spot, hence being a brilliant move. Can you find it? He plays bishop to g6, check. So what happens if you take? Uh, bishop to h6, you have to go to h6, but if you if you decided to take, pretty much game over because you go, uh, it allows this check with the queen, and then after king goes to g5, you get uh, rook to g3 check, king to f6, queen to d6 check, king to f7, rook to f3, king to g8, and queen takes the rook. So a nasty nasty move by Gary Kasparov. So Anand goes h6, then we get queen to d5, we get queen to g5 uh, blocking, we get bishop to f5, nice little move, blocking off, uh, and then we get h4. A great move, lovely move. Um, does it look like he's going to be uh, losing the piece here? 
Well, here, can you find out the defensive move, which is an attacking move that Kasparov plays when he plays h4? And of course, you can take it back because, boom, you end up losing your queen, whether you take it with the pawn or the bishop, doesn't matter. So here um, we get f6, and after the f6, we get d3. We get queen uh, to e5 checks. So we get the queens traded off. So Ananda is now playing down a pawn against Kasparov. And the game continues. We get rook to f6. We get c4. And uh, after bishop takes, we get this nice attacking move by uh, Anand, who plays bishop to e7. We get rook to b6. We get bishop to c5. We get the rook back again. And here we see Anand trying to win a pawn. Of course, we can get the defensive move here, but instead he plays d3. So d3 is another nice move by Kasparov, setting up the attack on this pawn. So we get Anand who goes back to g4, and we get king to h3. Great move, forcing him to move away from the defensive uh, efforts of this uh, square. But instead, Anand decides to respond by attacking the rook. And so we get rook to e6. Now we get rook uh, to h4, which is now protected by this bishop. Very nice indeed. So we get king to g3 only move. We get rook to d4. And now we get uh, Kasparov taking his second pawn. So he's up two pawns. And after king h5, we get bishop to f5. We get bishop to d6 check. We get f3 bishop to c5, we get g4 check, really love that move there, attacking with the pawn, so forces the king to go to h4, after h6 check, king comes back to g5, we get g6 check, we get king back to h4, and then we get bishop to e4. Bishop to e4, Anand now plays d6, after g7 by Kasparov, we get rook to f6 check, and here we see the lovely move, in fact, a great move of bishop to f5. And so we get rook to b6 attacking the pawn here. But after we have rook to h7 check and king moving to g5, we get rook to h5 check. King now has to move back and uh, we now get bishop to d3. So bishop to d3. We get bishop to d4 attacking this pawn again, and then we get g5 check. Now this pawn is rolling, so we get king to g7, but of course this now is going to allow the check on h7. We get king to f f8, we get bishop to c c4. This is like a never-ending, exhausting attack by Kasparov. It's even exhausting just in anal analyzing this uh, game. Uh, but we really see the depths of like concentration, the levels that is needed at this top level by Anand um, to try and survive in this game. And here he makes an accuracy by taking the pawn in b2. And here we get a lovely move of rook to f7. And after the king goes to e8, we get g6. And here, at this stage, Anand resigns. And he can resign for many reasons because after simply you play g6, even if you try and do a move like trying to survive to get the pawn, you're going to lose your bishop. If you go here and you try to take it, no matter what happens, the game is all over. Um, so really great game by Kasparov, full of uh, attacking, exhausting, exacting display. In fact, if you look at the review of the game, we see what a high level game it was. It was a 94.3% accuracy rating by Kasparov and 91% by Anand. Brilliant chess, fantastic chess, and a really wonderful win by Gary. Gary Chess himself, Mr. Kasparov.